Hi everybody, this is Brian Seymour, Director of Instructional Technology for Pickerington Local School District. I'd like to take a few minutes to show you how to set up um, your PARC uh, Pearson Access Next training site and to be able to show you how to um, log some student or get teachers uh, acclimated with um, going through the steps that they're going to do when they actually get into the actual real testing um, here in a couple weeks. So the site that you're going to use for this is what's known as the Training Pearson Access Next. The page that I have up here is the training site. This is what's also called the Brown site, whereas the legitimate website um, is, is basically the blue site and the Pearson Access Next. So all of our building principals and all of our BTAs have access to this because this is the exact same page that we used when we did the infrastructure test about uh, a week or so ago. So you should have account information for this. So you may go ahead and log in. All right, and when you log in, everything looks really, really familiar, really similar to what it is that we're going to be doing testing on and what we've been training with. Um, so what you're going to need to do, let's say you want your teachers to actually go through all of those steps to be able to practice what it is that they're going to see on test morning uh, or test day and what it is that they're going to have to do. So here they can play around with it a little bit, make those mistakes that they may make the first time coming in. Okay, so. There are three steps that you'll need to do. You'll need to set up the user accounts. Number two, you're going to need to create a, a, a fake students or dummy students. And then three, you're going to need to uh, set up a testing session or a fake testing session that those teachers can play around with then. Okay? So step number one, create users. So you're going to go under setup and you're going to go to users. And if you click here, this will show everybody that has an account um, in your building will, will be what pulls up. And uh, so if they don't have an account yet, you'll have to go through this step for every single one of your teachers that you do want to set up an account for. So you go up here, you'll click on Select Tasks. You'll click on Create Edit Users. Click on the Start button. And then it'll say select an organization, so whatever school it is that you want, um, yours should only have your school. Selected roles, you want to select test administrators, the one at the very bottom. Count, make sure it's enabled. User account, um, set it up so that it is their email address. Activation day, you can activate it today. Um, last name. Don't worry about putting an end date. We don't need to worry about that. We'll take care of that globally. Um, first name, delete date will be grayed out, and then email address. Okay. This will then, once you hit create, this will then send them a email that says they now have an account um, in the uh, Pearson Access Next, Next training page. Okay. So you'll need to do that for every single one. So if you have 20 staff members that you want to have accounts, you'll need to do that 20 times. And you can just keep on clicking, clicking on create users, create users, create users. Okay. When you're done and you have everybody in, go ahead and select exit task. Then you're going to need to create students. And you're going to need to create students for each one of those sessions. Okay. So underneath here, you're going to go to setup and you're going to go to student. Now, Park's got an easy way to set this up um, so that we can put fake students in, and that's what we did when we did our um, uh, the, the infrastructure test. So here now we're in students. You're going to click on select tasks, and you're going to go down here to where it says generate sample students. Okay, And you're going to click on start. You're going to click on whatever organization it is. Yours should be the only one that pops up. And then you're going to go through these steps here for assessing. So create a new class. So what I would just do is I would just say, if this is Diley, say Diley Middle School 1. Grade level that's assessing. Pick whatever's in your building. Doesn't really matter. Test. Test has to match up, so make it math or, or ELA in those grade numbers. Test format online. And number of students. Number of students honestly doesn't really matter because the kids, we are not going to have time to be able to get the kids um, onto the system to be able to go through it. Okay?
and we're out of the, the time for the infrastructure test. So generate, okay? So now I've created one class that I can use. So if I have 20 classes, I'm gonna have to do this 20 times. So what I would do then is I would change this each time. The first one was Diley uh, Middle School 1. This one I would make it Diley Middle School 2. Everything else can be exactly the same, okay? When you've got them all in there, you've now got exit, you can exit task, and you're going to go over to testing. So now you've created your users, basically your teachers, your test administrators, and you've created all the students, the, the dummy, the fake students that you're going to use um, in this um, uh, practice example. So now you've got to create the sessions. So you're going to go up here to testing, you're going to pull down to sessions, and you're going to, once again, go to select tasks, create and edit sessions, click on start. And here is now where you're going to create those sessions. So what I would do now is I would create um, session names. And with these session names, I would go with the teacher's last name and the subject that they're doing. That will make it consistent with what it is that we've been doing uh, across the board. Okay. Organization, pull down to your school. Test assigned, you're going to pull down to whatever test you made it before. So if you made them all math or ELA, it doesn't really matter. Um, just make sure that it matches to what you previously did. Okay. Scheduled start date, you can put whatever you want in here. It doesn't really matter. Scheduled start time, you can complete. Just leave it as it is. Lab location for this purpose, you don't need to have anything here. Um, form group type, uh, the only thing that's available is main, and don't worry about anything that says proctor reads aloud. Okay. Now, to assign those kids into that test session, you're going to go here where it says find name and ID in Diley Middle School. You're going to pull down to find class, and we call that one class Ross, or we call it, excuse me, call it Diley Middle School 1. Click on that, you've now got a test session built. Okay, You would then need to do that if you've got 20 sessions, you would need to do that 20 times. So each teacher's name going up in here, so that way then they can practice with it. So then, when you actually get into all the steps and the teachers actually start to log in, they can go through all of the steps that they would need to. So they would go up to testing, they would click on sessions, they would click here to find all those sessions. If I was Bob Ross and I'm looking for that session, I'm going to click here. And then I can go up to select tasks and click on show students in sessions and control sessions. Click over here. And then I've got all those commands that I would need. I can go in and I can print out seal codes. I can print out scheduled sessions. You know, all those practice things that we wanted people to do. We've also got all the, the fake students down here. Teacher can go in and start the assessment if they'd like. And they can continue to see. They can go in and look and see what this part of it looks like. Okay. But basically in the Brown site, this is completely practice. So if they do anything wrong, it doesn't really matter. It's a sandbox. It's something for them to, to play in and, and figure out what it is they're doing, what it is they need to fix. Uh, so on and so forth. So if you have teachers that are really apprehensive about um, giving the, the park test and, and following all the little steps that they're going to have to do and all the button clicks that they'll need to, to do, um, I would strongly recommend that you go ahead at the building level and set up uh, the practice tests um, so that way the, the teachers actually get the practice um, on this end of what it is they'll have to do and what it is they'll have to click on uh, during, during the session. Um, now, this will only be like for the very beginning. Obviously, at, the, at our end, we're not going to have kids logging in or anything like that, so they won't get to see what the kids will see. They won't get to practice the resume portion of things. Um, they could kind of mirror it and mimic it, but it's not going to go through all of the steps. Um, but it is going to give them a very, very good practice and, and give them some comfortable level um, for them to do. Now, I do want to say is once they start this session, there's no way for you to go back and like refresh and let them practice clicking that start button again. Um, so, so that may be a little bit of an issue. If you want to set up two practice sessions for each one of the teachers, you can. You can do as much as you want with this. So hope this helps. Uh, 
hope this helps with practicing and going through all those different steps that the teachers are going to have to do when we actually have to give these real tests um, in about a week and a half or two weeks. All right. Thank you very much.